Hello again, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we'll be going over adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing your integers. Okay, so first, we're going to start off with the very basic of questions, which is what is an integer? Okay, so the best way to explain it would be on what's called a number line. And a number line is literally just that, a line where you have all of your numbers. Okay, so let's say we start here at zero, then we go one, two, three, four, five, six, just going to the right, oh, sorry about that. Now, once we go to the right, we go the same direction to the left, but then every number is negative. So you have negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six, and it just keeps on going the same way that just keeps on going. Okay, so these numbers shown plus the numbers that are not shown are your integers. We have zero, positive one, negative one, positive two, negative two, positive three, negative three, positive four, negative four, positive five, negative five, and it keeps on going like that. All positive and negative whole numbers. Those are your integers. Okay, so when you add, subtract, multiply, divide, it's a little bit different than how you would just add your regular numbers or your regular positive numbers in some cases. All right, so let's start off with our adding integers with the same sign. adding integers with the same sign. And we'll start off just by showing how that will work on a number line. Okay, now after we show how it works on the number line, we'll show how to do it without a number line. So this is just kind of an introduction to how it's done. Okay, so what if we wanted to add one plus three? Okay, so if we had that on a number line, we have zero, one, two, three, four, five, and we'll go negative one, negative two. Negative three, you don't need a whole lot of the negative side. Well, let me straighten up that three a little bit. There we go. Okay, so we start at zero. Okay, so starting at zero, one and three, really that's just positive one and positive three. We just don't worry about putting the positive down. Okay, so if we start at zero and we go to positive one plus we go positive three, we're going to go from there and we go an additional one, two, three. And we end up right here. So one plus three gives us our four. Okay, so let's say we decide to add negative one plus negative five.
Okay, so let's go zero, one, two, three, four, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six, negative seven, and we'll go to negative eight. Okay, so just like before, we're going to start at zero. Okay, so if we have negative one, starting at zero, we're going to go to negative one. And remember, negative one, or your negative numbers are to the left, your positive numbers are to the right. Plus negative five, so we're going to go an additional negative five, one, two, three, four, five. Plus negative five. So we end up right here. So negative one plus negative five equals negative six. All right, so just a quick note. When the signs are the same, just add the absolute value and use the common sign. So when the signs are the same, just add their absolute values or their positive values and use the common sign or their common sign. So this way you won't have to worry about constantly using the number line, especially for your larger numbers. And I'll show you what I mean by their absolute value. And when, when the signs are the same, they're usually a lot easier. All right, so let's say, for example, you want to add, let's say for problem A, we have 8 plus 5. And let's say for problem B, we want to add negative 8 plus negative 5. Okay. So for problem A, that's pretty straightforward. 8 plus 5 is 13. Now for problem B, Pretty much the same idea. The only difference is, since you're adding two negative numbers, your answer is going to be negative. So since 8 plus 5 equals 13, that means that negative 8 plus negative 5 equals negative 13. That's the only thing you're doing differently. If you add two negative numbers, your answer is going to be negative. If you're adding two positive numbers, your answer is going to be positive. Okay, now I want you to try solve the next problem. So if you want to add negative 23 plus negative 38. Okay, go ahead and push pause. I want you to solve that one, and when you're done, you can start on it. All right, so I'm assuming you push pause, you work it out, and just verifying that your answer is right. Okay, now since we know that 23 plus 38 is 61, that just means that negative 23 Plus negative 38 is just negative 61. That's it. So if you add the positive value, adding the two negatives is just the same answer. 
but negative. Okay, now that's if the signs are exactly the same. If the signs are different and you want to add them, then you have a little tweaking to do on your approach. Okay, so let's say our signs are different. So now we're adding integers with different signs. So your first step, really just a two-step process. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to subtract, subtract the smaller absolute value from the larger absolute value. Now your second step is your answer will have the sign of the largest absolute value. Larger. Absolute value. Use the glare. The sun decided to change directions on me. All right, so let's say, for example. We want to add, say, for problem A, 3 plus negative 7. And for problem B, negative 18 plus 15. Okay, so starting on problem A, the larger absolute value would be negative 7. Okay, so the absolute value of negative 7, that's just 7. And the absolute value of 3 is just 3. So the absolute value of a positive or negative number would just be positive. Okay, so then you just subtract it. So 7 minus 3 is 4. So we see here our larger absolute value is negative. So negative 7 is the larger absolute value. So 4 becomes negative 4, which is your answer, negative 4. And the reason why is because your larger absolute value is negative. So your answer will be negative. Okay, now let's do answer I mean, problem B. The absolute value of negative 18 is just 18. And the absolute value of 15 is just 15. So we go ahead and subtract that one. 
18 minus 15 is 3. So you look at your larger absolute value. So again, negative 18 is the larger, oops, let's separate that a little bit, absolute value. So 3, your answer, becomes negative 3. Okay, it becomes negative because your largest absolute value is negative. Now, if your larger absolute value is positive, then that would just stay positive. But since for both of these, your large absolute value is negative, so your answer is negative. Larger absolute value is negative, so your answer becomes negative. Okay, so let me give you a problem to try on your own. Say for example, you wanted to add negative 323 plus 547. Okay, so I want you to press pause. Try to work this one out on your own. Okay, you want to use the same steps that I used for the previous two examples. Okay, so assuming you press pause and you've worked it out, so now we're just verifying that your answer is correct. Okay, so the larger absolute value will be your 547. So the absolute value of 547 is just 547. Remember, your absolute value of a positive or negative number is just going to be positive. Okay, and the absolute value of negative. 323 is just 323. So we're going to subtract those two. And we end up with 224. Okay, now for this one, your largest absolute value is positive. Okay, so 547 is the largest absolute value here. So your answer of 224 will stay positive because this is positive. Okay, so you won't always have to write out all of that. All of that. It's just to make sure the idea comes across. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so let's say, for example, we want to add, say for problem A, 25 plus negative 32, and for problem B, negative 112 plus 358. Okay, so once again, I want you to press pause and try to solve those two on your own. And when you're done, we'll come back and work on that problem. All right, so assuming you pressed pause, you worked it out, everything's set, I'm gonna go ahead and work those out. Okay, so we need the absolute value of both of these. This is the larger absolute value, so that goes on top. So the absolute value of negative 32 is just 32. Oh, this is problem A. Here we go. And the absolute value of 25 is 25. So we're going to go ahead and subtract those. And 32 minus 25 is 7. Okay, so of course, since negative 32 is the largest absolute value, Negative uh, 32 is the 
largest absolute value. So seven becomes negative seven because your largest absolute value is negative. So let's start on question B. F, largest absolute value here is 358. So the absolute value of 358 is 358. And the absolute value of negative 112, uh oh. Is just 112. Bring that up a little more. Okay, so we go ahead and subtract those, and we end up with 246. Now our largest absolute value is positive, so we know that that's just going to stay positive. 258. The largest absolute value. Uh -oh. So 246 stays positive. That means your answer is just 246. Okay, so hopefully it's all making sense so far. So now we're going to look at subtracting your integers. There we go. Okay, so when we're subtracting our integers, when subtracting integers, first thing you want to do, you want to change your minus sign to plus. So change your minus sign to plus. Okay, and your second step is you're going to change the sign of the term immediately to the right. Change the sign of the term. the immediate right. Okay, so in other words, if you had something that was, let's say, some number A minus some number B, you'd write down the first one, change the minus to plus, and instead of minus B, it will be plus negative B. Because here, this is positive A minus positive B. So here you'd make it a plus negative b. So you're just changing the sign to the immediate right. Okay. So let's do a couple of examples to translate this to solving the actual problem. Okay, so what if we wanted to subtract? Okay. So for problem a, we have negative 13 minus 4. And for problem B, 5 minus negative 6. OK, 
Okay, so let's go ahead and solve problem A. We have negative 13 minus 4. Remember the minus sign, you're going to change to plus. And that 4, you're going to make that negative 4. So negative 13 minus 4, that's going to become negative 13 plus negative 4. And remember, when the two signs are the same, you just add their absolute value and give them the common sign. So 13, positive 13 and positive 4 will give us 17. So negative 13 plus negative 4 will just be negative 17. And again, excuse the glare. The sun kind of swings around certain times of day. All right, so let's go on with problem B. So if we have 5 minus negative 6, remember that minus changes to plus because you have a positive and a negative. Here you had a negative and a positive. So that changes to plus. And here, negative 6 becomes 6. So change negative 6 to 6. Okay, so this becomes 5. So minus turns to plus, And the negative 6 becomes positive 6. You don't need the parentheses, but I kind of just put it there anyway. Okay, so 5 plus 6 is just 11. Same sign. All right. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to give you two problems to try on your own. And then we'll see how you're doing. Okay, so what if we wanted to subtract? Let's say if you have 3 minus 6 for your problem A and for your problem B, negative 1 minus negative 7. All right, so go ahead and press pause. I want you to work out those two. And when you're done, come back and we'll see how well you did. All right, so I'm assuming you press pause, you worked everything out. Now you're back to verify that you got everything correct because you are smart. All right, let me try to bring this down out of the sunlight. There we go. Okay, so for problem A, we have 3 minus 6. Okay. So really what you're going to do, you're going to change that to, because you can't subtract 3, I mean 6 from 3 without going into the negatives. So what we're going to do is, Uh oh, not change sign, change to pi plus. And change 6 to negative 6. Okay, so that means we will end up with 3. And we're going to change that minus to plus and 6 to negative 6. So that's 3 plus negative 6. And once we follow all of the steps for adding signs that are different, we'll end up with negative 3. Okay. 
Now for problem B, we have negative 1 minus negative 7. Again, our minus, we're going to change to plus. And the negative 7, we're going to change negative 7 to positive 7. So we end up with negative 1 plus 7. Again, different signs. So you go through all the steps for adding together different signs, and you end up with 6. Kind of separate this a little bit. There we go. All right, so now we can go to multiplying and dividing. Okay, multiplying and dividing integers. Okay, now when multiplying or dividing integers, you basically have two rules. Well, sunlight just went away, so the glare isn't so bad. Okay, when multiplying or dividing integers, If the two signs are the same, your answer is positive. Okay, two, if the two signs are different, your answer is negative. Okay, so this is how it would look. You have a positive times a positive, and then your answer will be positive. Same thing if you have a negative times a negative, because those are the same sign, your answer will be positive. Now, if division, if you had a positive divided by a positive, your answer will be positive. And if you had a negative divided by a negative, your answer will be positive. Okay. Now, it also means that if your signs are different, you'll end up with negative answers. Okay, so if you have a negative number times a positive number, two different signs, your answer is going to be negative. Same thing if you flip them around. If you have a positive number times a negative number, your answer is going to be negative. Same thing with division. If you have a positive number divided by a negative number, your answer is going to be negative. And if you have a negative number divided by a positive number, your answer is going to be negative. So remember, when the signs are the same, when you're multiplying or dividing, it's going to be a positive answer. If the signs are different, whether you're multiplying or dividing, your answer is going to be negative. So if you remember those two, actually doing multiplication of integers is pretty straightforward. 
All right, so let's throw a couple of examples out here. Okay, so what if we multiply, say for problem A, negative 8 times positive 4. Say for problem B, positive 22 times negative 1. And for problem C, negative 8 times negative 10. All right, so let's get started on problem A. Negative 8 times positive 4. Remember, negative times positive equals negative. So 8 times 4 is 32. Negative times positive makes that negative. So for problem B, let's say we have our what are we, 22 times negative 1. Same thing here. We have our positive times negative, which is negative. So 22 times 1 is 22. But positive times negative is negative. So you multiply just the regular positive values, and depending on how many positive, whether they're the same or different, will denote whether it's positive or negative. Okay, so I want you to press pause, and I want you to solve C. Okay, assuming you press pause, you've already worked out C. We have negative 8 times negative 10. Okay, so that means you have a negative times a negative. Signs are the same, so you know it's going to come out to be positive. Okay, 8 times 10 is 80. Now we look at the signs, negative times negative is positive, so that would just stay as positive 8. All right, so now we're going to do a few division problems. Okay, move that up a little bit. Okay, so what if we wanted to divide okay, for problem A? Negative 18 divided by 3. Problem B, negative 14 divided by negative 2. And for problem C, 20 divided by negative 4. Okay, so for problem A, negative 18 divided by 3. We can just rewrite that as negative 18 divided by 3. Okay, so 18 divided by 3 is 6. Negative divided by positive is negative. Okay, so let's go on to problem B. Make a little divide there. Negative 14 divided by 2, negative 2. 14 divided by 2 is 7. Negative divided by negative is positive, so that stays positive. So negative divided by negative is positive. Okay, so just like before, I want you to press pause. I want you to try problem C. All 
right, assume you press pause and you worked it all out and you're ready to go. We have problem C. So we have 20 divided by negative 4. Now 20 divided by 4 is 5. Positive divided by negative is negative. So positive divided by negative is a negative. Okay, so hopefully that made sense. It was a pretty good refresher. And I will see you on the next video.